Hello and welcome to Out and About Art, your PGTV source for all things art in Polk County. I'm your host, Dion Spires. Art has been proven to make a difference in the lives of those that it touches, and on this episode, we're looking to highlight the difference that it's making in our own Polk County community. We're going to kick things off with an organization that's not new to the area, but recently gained recognition for their gala held at the Polk Theater. Strings in Need has been working for years to encourage youth to find a passion for music. They provide a variety of musical lessons in many different areas of Polk County to students who may not have otherwise had the opportunity to pursue the arts. Take a look at this to find out how the organization got started and more about their mission. The sun will come out tomorrow, but your bottom, bottom dollar that tomorrow. Strings in Need was founded by Rebecca Lipson, a 14-year-old student at All Saints Academy. Her parents contacted my consulting firm to see if we could help her start a company. So we met with her in March 2015 and founded Strings in Need. Initially, the concept was to help students afford instruments and then we gradually realized that that wasn't really going to be a solution that we had to combine that with affordable lessons so we began the search of instructors that were willing to work at a discounted rate and that was a little challenging we couldn't find very many people at first that were willing to work at a lower rate Eventually, we did find a couple. Now, we're very happy to provide guitar, voice, and piano, and musical theater. So, we've really enjoyed w watching those instruments and those genres of music explode over here um, with both group and private students. So, it's been really good. One of the things that we've noticed right off the bat was that there were so many parents looking for affordable music lessons. We had no idea how many parents actually had contemplated lessons for their children and then realized there was no way they could afford them. So right off the bat, as soon as we started publici publicizing lesson opportunities on Facebook and other social media, on the website and then we had Bay News 9 and the Ledger and everywhere we went we were getting feedback that this was a huge need, much bigger than we ever imagined. Initially the goal was that we would work with kids that lived below, at, or just above poverty level and then we realized that we were really not giving the program everything it could be, the opportunity to be everything it could be we began to say all students and we developed a sliding scale. So we have children that live below poverty level mixed in class group classes and private lessons with students that live way, way, way above poverty level. And we're finding that it's a really good combination because these kids are becoming friends, they're hanging out together, they're studying music together. Some of them are breaking up into little ensemble groups that sing together or perform together. And that's really been the ultimate goal now is to not worry about, you know, how much money people make. Just make sure that no matter how much money you make, you get afforded the same quality lesson, the same type of instrument, the same type of instructor. Our lessons begin at $8 a week and they are, the highest rate is $30 a week. And they're for 30 minutes le lessons, not for a full hour. Um, we tried the hour model and it just... It, we couldn't keep the attention span that we wanted for the age groups that we have. So for us, it was, it was a lot better to reduce that time, reduce the rate, and make it you know, even more affordable for students that um, otherwise they would never be able to afford it. You know, we're often worried, how are they affording gas to get here? You know, and, and we've got a lot of students that you know, if mom's out sick or dad's out sick or someone loses their job, it can disrupt their whole plan and then we will try to find the money to help compensate for that so that their kids' lessons don't have to be interrupted because of hardship on the family, health, or job-wise. I've done music all my life. 
um, ever since I can remember. I teach both voice and guitar. Um, at, I, I'm mainly the, the group teacher, so a lot of our instructors do personal, like, one-on-one -on -one classes, um, just kind of individuals, um, and they meet and teach, you know, for 30 minutes. I teach longer classes, so an hour to an hour and a half, uh, but it's full groups, so it can be anywhere from three to eight kids, um, or high schoolers um, in some cases. So I teach at a couple different areas. I started teaching um, at our school here uh, in downtown and also Pace School for Girls and uh, Boys and Girls Club. So um, it's a lot of different um, kind of uh, demographics, I guess. Um, like Pace is all girls that are, have kind of gone through rough times in their life. And um, our school is um, a lot of um, kids with mental or, edu or educational disabilities. Um, and then Boys and Girls Club is um, a lot of just poverty and kids that um, are in a rough spot in that way. So it's a lot of different demographics and learning those because I've never really been involved in um, that many areas, I guess, um, and stuff like that. So it's been kind of learning where they're at and how to communicate with them individually. I grew up an at-risk kid and music was a center for me. And I was really fortunate to have a strong musical background with my grandmother, like, you know, The Sound of Music and Mary Poppins. And a lot of the big musicals were part of what we did together, how we spent time together. I wasn't a musician by any means, but coming into parenthood and raising our kids and knowing that impact that music and theater and all those opportunities had on them. We knew that that was a big connector, a connector for our family, a connector for all different academic levels. It doesn't really matter if you're a college graduate or you're not a college graduate. It doesn't really matter if you have, you know, 10,000 in the bank or $10 in the bank. Music is music and it can and will continue to connect humans in a really good solid way if we, if we cultivate that. So one of the biggest things we see is that it's an equalizer. It, you know, when a kid sits down in a chair in our studio and puts a guitar in their hand, the guitar has no idea where they came from. You know, no, nothing matters except for the joy that that child is finding in their musical journey. And that's kind of why we stick around and keep doing it and keep fighting to keep this place going and open is just that reason. not offer to the students that live below poverty level and at poverty level. We want to make sure they get the same musical journey no matter what. So that means fundraising. Anybody in the nonprofit world knows that it's, it can be touch and go in your first couple years. So we're really hopeful. We love our home here at the United Methodist Temple. Um, we share a space with our school and they've been very generous in helping us start off with low rent and work our way up to a rent that we can afford. Um, so we could get out of my house, which was very nice. Um, but again, you know, it's constant fundraising. One of our primary ways of fundraising is by having house events or at, you know, a local restaurant, you know, some venue that seats, you know, 50 people. Um, we like to bring in professional musicians and we get a lot of volunteers from the community of musicians that we have in Polk County to perform and we use it as information giving time, but also we end up tending to raise between two and 3,000 at events like that. Because um, typically we're inviting people that don't know about us yet. And once they hear about us, they typically end up becoming donors. Even if it's, you know, $10 a month, we'll take it. $20 a month, we'll take it. However much you can justify, we're happy to take it. And there's multiple ways to give. You can give by visiting our website, or you can give by writing a check, and all of that information is on the website for people to use. But if you want to have a house event, just let us know and we'll we'll work on it with you to get music in your house and fill it up with lots of fun noise of children and hopefully raise some money. Strings in Need currently services approximately 60 students and they're constantly receiving applications. They hope to be able to take on more students in the future with growth of their program. For more information on Strings in Need or to get involved, visit their website at www.stringsinneed.com. 
Now I'm here at TheaterWorks Florida in Davenport with Scott Cook, the artistic director and founder of TheaterWorks Florida, and Mark Graham, the associate project director, to talk about their latest project, which is giving back to our community. Hey guys, thanks for joining me again. I've, I've been, been with you on the show multiple times, Scott. Thank Always you. a pleasure. Thanks for having us. Mark, good to have you for the first time. Thank you. <laughs> Happy to be here. Um, so you guys just came off of a really successful first season. First of all, congratulations on that. Thank you. We're very proud. Yeah, definitely. It was a huge, huge deal here in Polk County for us. Yes, it was. Um, and now you guys, you guys have been giving back to the community through a Theater Cares program for a long time, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you're kind of expanding that now. So let's start off by talking about what Theater Cares is, what you guys have done with that, and how that started. Sure. Um, Theater Cares is our uh, community outreach program and it was originally, uh, it came about when in 2014 we got called by the National Endowment for the Arts and they were offering us an opportunity to go for a grant called um, Arts Engagement in American Communities and what the grant was about was looking for different geographic holes around America that weren't being served or given the opportunity for people to see the arts and so it started out with me looking for a title for the project and my company manager, Abel Gonzalez, came around the corner one day and said, it's not a title, it's an entire project, it's a whole program. And I'm like, oh, here we go. <laughs> so, it, and it really was his brainchild. What, so what Theater Cares is all about is bringing the arts to our underserved population. And now you guys are diving into your next project yes. at Theater Cares. Mm -hmm. um, and that's for veterans, which I think is really awesome. We have over in the Winter Haven area, I've actually spoken on the show about um, kind of a visual art painting and that sort of thing right. cause for veterans. But this is totally different because it's all theater based. Um, Vet Voices, tell me what, what's going on with that. This project has been under research and development for over a year. Um, back uh, maybe January, February of last year, 2017, I knew we needed a new focus group for the Theater Cares program to continue. And I did a very quick search online. All I did on Google was put in arts and military, and I could not believe what jumped up in front of me, and I fell down a rabbit hole. Well, at the same time that was happening, one of the articles that popped up was by um, Americans for the Arts, which is a big organization throughout the United States. Um, and they were holding the fourth national summit of arts and health in the military in Tampa, wow. an hour away. Yeah. I was on that phone so quick, and I got a hold of the director of the actual um, program. And that weekend, we were in Tampa spending time with people who are creating this arts and health coalition, bringing these two sides of therapy together, creative therapy and seeing the incredible results that they're having with our military veterans. That's really how it began. We are trying to create a safe space environment for our military veterans. Um, by the, we've, we've been given an, a fourth National Endowment for the Arts grant um, for this particular project. And by the definition of the project, it will end in a year's time. That is not our intention with this, with this Theater Cares project. We want an ongoing safe space for our veterans to come and explore all aspects of live theater for so that they can have self-awareness, self-discovery, and maybe even in the end turn towards a, a side career or find something that they don't even know that they like. And a lot of this is, is, will help them to normalize their lives, hopefully, and find creative healing um, from the effects of war, from being you know, in, in wartime. Whether it be right. Vietnam or, or, wherever, or wherever, wherever it is, it doesn't matter. It's, and it's open not only to the veterans, but also to their family and caregivers. Correct. And uh, we're going to be just exploring, allow them to explore theater, all aspects of it, from storytelling, uh, from sharing, from dance, from movement. Uh, we're just going to explore all those elements and see if we can find a way, and the end result would be a performance of some sort. The end ultimate result through all of these three sort of sections of workshops is supposed to be an original musical play and we will get there again having no idea what it means or what it will be but I think that's the most fascinating thing because we don't want the agenda to be about us we want it to be about their self-discovery and what they find through all of these things we just present to them and another important thing that we talked about last week in a meeting um, was this is not a class this is just a place to come and discover things. 
a place to come and commune with your fellow veterans or their families or their caregivers. Um, so recruitment is a very big part of what we're doing right now, and I think that's important um, that people understand what they'd be getting into if they come to Vet Voices. Right. Um, you don't sign a contract. You don't come to class five nights a week. It's not that, that sort of experience. We will let them give us the energy to say, it will now become this, because that's what you brought to the table tonight. Next week, it might become that, because that's what you brought to the table. And it's just so cool. I mean, honestly, in the 32 years of direct, directing, it's frightening to me. Mm -hmm. But it's one of the most exciting things I, I think I've ever done. And we just still don't even know what it is. We also are up for another grant, aren't we? We are up for another grant. And therefore, <laughs> um, right after we close season, we had to write this grant very quickly. Um, but we are up for a $25,000 grant from USA Today News. We have passed uh, phase one, and what this money will be used for is to, uh, for 30 military families or more, we'll have to figure out how to divvy this up, um, they'll receive what we call an arts access pass. And they will get four free tickets to absolutely everything we do all year from our main stage season to highlight uh, workshops that we might hold. They can give those tickets out to their friends and family um, to the final presentation. So that is, we went after that funding because that portion of our program isn't funded. Right. Um, with that, we passed phase one and we've been accepted into the grant process. Uh, part two of the grant process is what we're in right now. We have to raise $3,000 to prove to USA Today News that we as a company have the ability to be sustainable after their money disappears. Mm -hmm. If you can pass that 3,000, you go to level three where they're actually going to pick these grants and give them out to people. What is our deadline? Our deadline is like uh, very quickly. It's <laughs> May 19th. So we're very, we're, you know, we've got only got a very short amount of time to raise this money. So, right. so how can people help you guys? If you go directly to our website, um, www.theaterworksfl.org, and that's theater with an R-E, not an E-R, <laughs> um, we have a page for Theater Cares, and right there um, you'll see the donation button. It'll take you over. It'll give you the short story of what we're rambling on about today. <laughs> um, there's a video in case you've forgotten about what we've talked about. Um, and really what we're looking for is people who support this incredible alternative idea of arts and clinical therapy coming together for the healing of our veterans, um, people who've been affected, whether it be friends and family, the veterans themselves, we're looking for support from them, and also corporate businesses and local businesses who know the worth and, and, and what, our, what our veterans go through on a daily basis. And to be able to offer something so incredible to our community, to our veterans, um, is it, there's just no, there's there's no description there's no price tag you can put on this sort of experience you know for us we get to l do what we love and affect people's lives and and you know for me I've seen it three times running with theater cares projects the the takeaway it, there's no price you could put on it there's no way to buy this feeling well I thank you guys for for doing this for our community and I look forward to seeing what it turns into thank and I thank you, you guys for your time thank, thank you. you. Thanks. For more information on Vet Voices, visit www.theaterworksfl.org. Finally, we're taking a look at another organization which brings the arts into the lives of the youth in our Winter Haven area. The Eloise Art Center uses their Prodigy After School program to get students involved in drama, dance, and visual art with all of their classes leading up to a showcase for family and friends. I met up with those involved to find out more about the Prodigy program and their recent showcase event. The center here in, in, in Eloise is more of a all-purpose, catch-all community center for the people that live in Eloise. Most of the youth that come to the programs here come from Snively Elementary School, but we also feed into other schools within the community, through in Eagle Lake and um, Inwood and, and just some of the surrounding neighborhoods. Here at the center, we, have, we partner with the county, Parks and Recreation, to provide an after-school program for kids first through fifth grade. We do help some middle school children, but mostly the kindergarten through fifth grade. Typically on an average day, uh, the kids will come in, they'll have snack, and they'll do their homework. And then they will divide up into some of the prodigy classes that we offer here, which currently right now is drama and hip-hop dance. 
and we're soon to be adding um, a painting mixed media class as well. I'm taking drama. I take dance. I basically do all the dance moves with all my friends and in drama I act out some things. I choose drama because I feel like I can act. Because I feel like that's my passion. I think it's something I really like to do. Like, I would like to do it at home. That's why I practice with my mom and dad. So I've started actually since I was seven after school. Typically, what will happen is we'll have those classes two days a week. So if, um, if the art class is on a Tuesday, they'll also be here Thursday and Monday, Wednesday, because our program runs, runs through Monday through Thursday. So they'll have an opportunity to enroll in those classes, and they're typically six to eight weeks long. So they have a, a good amount of time to get interested, maybe learn something new they haven't done, or get reint reintroduced into something they have done before, because a lot of times, the youth will carry over into their, um, their art of their choice, per se. So with our drama class, which is with a new instructor this year, it basically was an opportunity for them to learn the basics of drama, um, staging, cue, some of the cue cards, memorizing lines, improv, and things like that. We begin our class with games, like uh, certain Simon Says type games and different games that make them believe that they're an actor or an actress and standing still learning to project and then we take things that are problem solving anger management and social skills and intertwine them into whatever skit that we're working on our hip-hop dance instructor uh, comes from a professional dance group out of orlando and she is fascinating and just brilliant in her choreography skills. And she has taught, I believe this is our first hip hop class that we've had here. We've taught other just dance classes, but for this performance on Wednesday, it's it's true hip hop. It's really, it's, it's amazing, extraordinary. With our new class starting after spring break, which will be the mixed media class, um, we have an instructor who um, just uses a variety of different techniques with when it comes to painting, um, introducing um, just different um, modules of, of not so much clay, but different techniques and how to do all those things and create um, 3D images and, and things like that. So it's pretty unique and the experience that they have for an after school program that to them is at no cost. So it's, it's it's awesome, <laughs> to be quite honest, it's, it's wonderful. organization out of Hillsborough County that makes a lot of the art programming that we do here um, very possible and and I have to tell you I think that we all need to give every kid in this place a round of applause right this second and all the guys that are out in the hallway there have been working all term long on what you're going to get to see tonight and it's very very exciting Basically, it's an opportunity for the youth to show off. <laughs> show off their talent, show to their parents and their friends and family everything that they've been doing since we started in August. So these youth have been in drama and hip hop classes since August. And this is a time for them to put all those skills together and like I said, show off their, their friends and family. So they've been working very hard, they've been having practices, um, run-throughs, costume changes, 
and just getting used to having costumes and things like that. And then once that's completed, we have an award ceremony for all the youth that participated in those classes. The act we're doing is, what do you want to be when you grow up? And Miss Patty makes the lines and, and her granddaughter, I believe, Miss Danielle. And Miss Dan Danielle is the dance teacher. They have little costumes that they're coming out in as what they are, you know, like a doctor, a vet. We have two dancers. We have a paleontologist, but we let them choose that, and we just put the costumes to that. We have dialogue. The dance backs up the dialogue. Dialogue. The dance backs up the dialogue. And then everyone will love the ending. They basically say, we made it! Because it's past, present, and future. Sometimes they'll let you go to a big room and they'll let you practice. Like, peop, like the teacher will stand in front of you and pretend to be the audience. And sometimes there's more than one class and the two teachers stand in front of you and they're like the audience. And then you're on stage, well, supposed to be on stage, and you're doing your lines and you're dancing. At first, it's really frightening, but once you get the hang of it, it usually, it usually becomes really fun. The Prodigy can be really fun. They're always giving out new options, and I like how they give out new options so we're not doing always the same thing. Children that are involved in the arts have a lower rate of committing crime, and getting into other gang-related activities. It also just gives them a sense of purpose and a sense to use their imagination. Because as we know, a lot of the classes that are in the schools have been cut due to funding. So a lot of those specials that they have are not what they used to be. So this provides an outlet for them. It's safe. We provide not only a safe environment, but a consistent environment with staff and just all of our day-to-day -day operations, which allows the youth to be able to maximize their full potential. It's hard to describe into words exactly what it is um, that I feel. Not only is it a sense of accomplishment, but you see the lives of these children changing. Um, you may not see it on a day-to-day -day basis, but it, when you see them where they started, and you think back to the beginning of the year, to where they are now getting ready for the showcase, and you see how proud they are, that they care about something, and they're putting their time and attention into something that they didn't really have to, they didn't really want to, but they chose to stick with it and do it. And I think to see them grow and to be influenced by something outside of themselves, to promote their creativity and to have them have an opportunity to take a chance, um, it's just, it's mind blowing to me. I mean, it, it makes my heart happy to see these kids have a chance to, to perform um, and be kids. For more information about the Prodigy program and other programs associated with the Arts Ensemble Education Foundation, visit www.artsensemblehealingarts.com. That's all I have for this month, but there's always plenty happening within our Polk County art community. Stay tuned for a list of events coming up in your area. As always, thank you for joining me and tune in next month for more art out and about.